Warm welcome to all trombonists and musicians out there. Today we're going to talk about one of the, the most common practice errors that I see nearly every one of my students do at some point and how we can fix it quickly and easily. Around. If you don't know me, I'm Nick Scholl, bass trombone player, euphonium tubist as well, committed to helping you get a solid foundation on the trombone. So what is the error I'm talking about? How often have you witnessed this kind of thing? I'm going to play a short excerpt from a German folk song. <laughs> Now, now, Kaspar, we talked about this. Don't forget, it's an E natural at the end, not an E flat. Second position. Try it again, Kaspar. <laughs> That's it, we're getting the hang of it now. If you just think of that note a little bit sooner at the end, second position, not at the bell, nearer to your face, I'm sure you'll get it. Go for it one more time. Brilliant, Casper. Thanks a lot, Nick. See you next week. And he's off or he's playing the next bit, he wants to play the next song. How often have you witnessed that? Now, the question to you is, do you think Casper would be able to perform that song correctly the next day, or even in front of an audience? I heavily doubt it. So we did three repetitions, right? And he got two wrong and only the last one correct. And then typically, he, she, anybody would sort of move on. They'd think, okay, that's it. It's, it's done and I'll move on. And that's precisely where the error occurs. Let's talk about <laughs> synaptic pathways. I'm going to put on my scientist hat now. Synaptic pathways in the brain. Okay, so why why is that not enough? Why is the one the one correct version not enough pretty simple but it helps to conceptualize this this problem this issue so we have these synaptic pathways in our brain right a to b giving a certain instruction to do a certain thing so let's say These are the two synapses in the pathway. And this line at the bottom here is what Casper was doing playing the E flat. Okay. Now let's say he only did one repetition, which was wrong. Okay. And we've got this line here. How often would he have to repeat it correctly? So we've got one line here correct with the E natural, but they're still kind of the same dominance. They're still, it's, it's like a path through the wood, like a mud, a dirt path. How often do you go through the dominant? Which is the dominant one? Obviously the one which is most trodden, right? So if you've got one and one, one, one wrong, one right, there's a second repetition. There's a third repetition and already it's a little thicker, right? It's a little more dominant. So I always insist with my students that they do at least three correct repetitions to stand any chance of, of it sitting correctly in the brain. That's a good start. So I'd recommend you just get a piece of paper, put it on your music stand. One, correct. Two three aim for at least three correct repetitions and then you're already in a good place the problem comes if you've been making that mistake for the whole week let's say you've been doing that mistake every single day for a week we're talking maybe 10 even 20 repetitions of the mistake 
Well, the reality there, unfortunately, is that you're going to have to do at least 21, more like 25 correct repetitions to get that correct synaptic pathway happening, which is why it's really an advantage to try not to make that mistake in the first place, be a better sight reader, be cleverer with how you approach these pieces. Um, it's, it's normally about the accidentals, right? You, if there's a new note, if the E natural is new, then put put a, a marking in, um, a, a, an, an accidental, like a natural sign, a second position, anything which helps you to not make that mistake in the first place. Another tip would be just to play a hell of a lot slower the, the first time. So we're winning time by being slower in a, in a sense. We're trying to create that correct synaptic pathway the first time that we play stuff. So let me know what you think about that. Just as a uh, final thought, please subscribe. Uh, encourage me to make more of these videos. If you haven't already, there's clearly not enough of this happening in the trombone community yet. Wouldn't you agree? Is that fair? Final thought, did you see James Bond? I saw it last night, very inspired, incredible trombone playing. Um, Hans Zimmer gave the bone section a variation of the theme. It was incredible, like in three, four, boom, 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 boom. I just found out it was recorded in London. That seems to be the, the tradition for all great films. <laughs> so was it Mark Frost on contrabass? I'm sure I heard a contrabass trombone there. Anyway, incredible section playing. So check it out. No Time to Die, I think it's called. Amazing trombone sounds. Thanks a lot and see you next time. Merry Christmas.